In this video, we're going to talk about how to solve Atwood's machine problems symbolically. Now, this is common on the AP test in the free response section. So this would be an example of a question that you would get asked on the AP test. A box of mass M1 is attached to a box of mass M2, as shown below. Box M1 is bigger than box M2. Find the acceleration of either box in terms of M1, M2, and any natural constants. Okay, so this is usually how the AP test phrases the free response question. Find the acceleration in terms of. What that means is your final answer should be A, the acceleration equals, and then something on the right hand side that has M1, M2, and then any natural constants in some sort of mathematical arrangement. Now, for us, the mathematical constant, or sorry, natural constant um, that's relevant is g, or the acceleration due to gravity, which we would normally say is 10 meters per second squared, or 9.8 if we're being more exact. So, really, this sentence at the end, it's asking you to find a with m1, m2, and then g as the only things on the right-hand side. So let's take a look at what that looks like and, and what counts as a correct answer. To solve this problem, we're going to do what we do with Atwood's machine problems all the time. The first thing that we have to do is think about how does it move, um, or how does it accelerate. If M1 is bigger than M2, then it's pretty clear to me that M1 is going to accelerate down, and M2 is going to accelerate up. So those dictate the direction of positive uh, motion and for force when we write equations for M1 and M2, um, which I'm actually going to go ahead and do that. You could draw free body diagrams for 1 and 2 if you want, or you can just sort of uh, draw them on the picture if you think that you can do that. M1 times G, so that's the weight of M1, and then there's going to be tension in the rope up T. Now, notice that the tension in the rope T has to be less than the weight of M1G, because the weight of that first box is uh, greater than the tension, and that's why it's going to fall down and accelerate as it falls. For block 2, the weight force, oh, sorry. For block 2, the weight force is smaller, M2G, and the tension up is equal to the tension um, up on the M1 block, uh, but in this case it would actually be a little bit bigger than the weight because it's going to accelerate that box up. Okay, so what I do with these is I write equations of force and I set them equal to MA, mass times acceleration. And I use the positive uh, to determine whether or not the weight or T is going to be the positive or negative force. So normally we, you know, we can write that out with a lot of work, let's see if we can just jump right to our system of equations. Starting with the M1 block, I'm going to say M1G minus T, because M1G is down, that's the positive direction, T is up, so that's the negative direction. So that's the equation for net force. What does that equal? Well, that equals the mass of block 1 times its acceleration. Okay, so that's the first equation. The second equation is going to come from the fact that t is now pointing up in the positive direction, so I write t as positive, then minus the weight, m2g, because the weight is pointing down, which now is in our negative direction. Okay, so this is equal to m2 times a, and I have my system of equations. Uh, now, it wants me to find the acceleration, which means I'm going to need to get rid of tension. Um, and the way that I can do that is by adding the left and the right sides of the equations. So if I add the left sides together, the tensions cancel out, and I get M1G minus M2G equals M1A plus M2A. Okay, so, so now I've got M1, I've got M2, natural constants, which means G, uh, and acceleration. So I just need to get the acceleration by itself. The way that I do that is I factor M1 and M2, and then I divide both sides by M1 plus M2. OK, 
Okay, so doing this allows me to cancel that out. I'm going to get rid of it and just write A now. And here I have an equation for A, and the only terms in that equation are M1, M2, and then G, which is a natural constant. So guess what? That is a final answer. This would give you all of the points on the free response question for the AP test. You could do one further simplification if you wanted, um, and, and that would be to factor, uh, here I'll write it off to the side, I'll write A equals this time. So you could do one more simplification, which is factoring M1 minus M2 out times G, um, but you actually don't have to do that to get full credit. So this would give you full credit for the question, um, and so would this further simplified answer uh, give you full credit for the question. So this is what the AP test wants when it uses the phrase in terms of. That means find an equation with these things on the right hand side. Um, yeah, that's it. Okay, good. So we found the acceleration. We are super smart. Yay. Now let's take a look at a type of problem where you are not going to be told what the mass of either object is. Just like in the last problem, you, want, you weren't told what the mass of either object was. Um, but, but now you are going to be told what the ratio of the masses is. And, and this is going to let you come up with a numerical value for the acceleration, um, but then also a symbolic value in terms of g, and then later a, a value of tension in terms of m and g. So let's, let's try this problem, see if you can follow along. Block A has a mass m. Block B is four times bigger than block A. What is the acceleration of either box in terms of G? What is the tension in the rope in terms of M and G? Okay, so let's, let's start by, by doing this. You are told that block A has a mass of M. So I'm going to go ahead and say MA equals M. So that I remember this block right here, it has a mass of m. And block b has a mass of 4 times m, because it's 4 times bigger. How do I write that? Well, 4 times m. Wow. OK. And of course, I know g is 10 meters per second squared, but I might not need to use that for this problem. OK, so what do I do with that m? What do I do with that 4m? Well, now I can write um, equations without ma and mb and instead use m and 4m. So let's, let's start with writing the weights uh, or the forces acting on each box. OK, you're going to have ma times g down for the a block, then tension up. The tension is bigger than the weight because it accelerates up. And that same tension is on the other side of the pulley, uh, resisting block B, but its weight, M, B, G is much bigger, and therefore it overcomes the tension and accelerates down. Okay, so here's what's different now that I have this M and 4M thing. Rather than saying M, A times G, I might just write M, G. And instead of writing M, B times G, I could write 4mg. That's it. Okay. So how does that help us? Well, let's find out. When it comes time for us to write our equations for A and B, for A, you know, you know what, I forgot to write the direction of motion. A goes up, so that's positive. B goes down, the acceleration, so that's positive. So when it comes time to write the equations for A, I'm going to have I'm going to have t minus mg equals ma times the acceleration, but remember ma is m, so I'm just going to write m times a. Okay, so that's the first equation. The second equation for b is going to be 4mg minus t. And again, that would equal mb times the acceleration, um, but mb is 4m, so I'm going to write that as 4m. OK, so what do I do? Well, I want to find the acceleration, right? So that means I'm just going to keep chugging along and solve for A. 
So I solved this system by adding the left and the right sides of the equations. Tension cancels. And I get 4mg minus mg equals ma plus 4ma. OK, well, now you can kind of see that, yeah, it's, it's easy to combine these things. 4mg minus mg, well, that's 3mg. ma plus 4ma, that's 5ma. And if I wanted to find an equation for the acceleration, what do I do about the fact that I don't know what m is? Well, guess what? It cancels out because it's on either side. Now, if I want to know what the acceleration is, I just divide both sides by 5. So I get 3 fifths of g is equal to the acceleration. So boom, that's the answer to the first part. What is the acceleration of either box in terms of g? 3 fifths. 3 fifths of g. Could I put a number to that? Sure. If I said that g was 10, then the acceleration would be 3 fifths of 10 meters per second squared, which is, what, 30 over 5, so 6 meters per second squared, which I would expect it to be less than the acceleration due to gravity, because it's a fraction of the acceleration due to gravity. Um, but anyway, it's not asking for a number. It's asking for an equation in terms of. Well, this is the equation in terms of. I found A in terms of G. What did I do about the fact that I don't know what the mass of either block is? Well, I did this little trick. And by doing that, I put those two things in the same term, M. And eventually, that term, M, got canceled out. So what if I was asked to find the tension in the rope in terms of m and g? Now this is actually, we don't even have to think too much about this one. What you would do here is you would take this acceleration and plug it back into either of these equations and solve for t. Now, but when you do this, you're going to get m in your final answer. It won't cancel out. So let me make some room, and I'll take away this stuff that I did to solve the system. Okay, so okay, so we knew the acceleration is 3 fifths of g. So I just plug that into an equation and solve for t. I'm going to use this equation. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of this. So much erasing. Oh my Jesus. Okay. So t is equal to ma plus mg, right? I added mg to both sides. Um, and at this point, I can factor this out, um, meaning a plus g times m. And now I can plug in the acceleration, m times 3 fifths g plus g. OK, well, what's 3 fifths g plus g? Well, that's kind of like saying, 5 fifths g, right? Because that's 1. So now this becomes m times 8 fifths g. Or the way that this would probably be written on, um, like, like if this was multiple choice questions on an AP test, is it would say 8 fifths mg. Which is saying that the tension in the rope is 8 fifths of the weight of block A, which makes sense that it would be a larger than 1 fraction because, again, the tension has to be larger than the weight of the object. So boom, you just did it. You found the tension in the rope in terms of M and G. Now, to do that, you found the acceleration in terms of only G. And to do that, we did this little trick right here. This trick is like, it's the trick. It's the way that you can solve these problems symbolically um, if you don't know what their masses are. And so sometimes um, if, you, if you see something like the toad is three times as big as the insect, then that's what it's asking you to do. Call one thing A, the other thing B, and then write M for one of them, and then the multiple for the other. Maybe the insect is A, and it has mass M, and then the toad is eight times bigger then the mass of b, the toad, would be 8m. That's what the trick is to doing this type of problem. OK, you're super smart, you're super awesome, and you're super great, and you're super done with this video.